Hey guys, this is a history of saps, blackjacks, and slung shots, and I was asked to do a video about targeting, basically, with our weapons, so I'm gonna do it. As you know, there's a wide variety of weapons within our family, even though they're all similar and related, so the first thing we've gotta do is break them down. And uh, we'll take this in three parts, and I'm gonna skip slung shots on this one. It just doesn't quite fit. So, first, soft saps. In a lot of ways, the quintessential weapon in our arsenal, right? Soft sap. And I'll start with the softest of my soft saps. And this is a pigskin sap that is probably filled with just sand. So in my opinion, this old-timer here is a headhunter. The only thing you're going to be able to use this effectively for is the knockout. It's not going to be used against joints on the body. It, you could hit, you know, to like a vulnerable spot, like say the charlie horse on the leg. I don't think it's going to get enough of an, ef of an effect to be worth it. So here's a soft sap, and this is a modern one, right, by D3 Protection. And this is kind of the classic buckshot-filled sap. So, buckshot, metals, denser than sand, and it hits a little bit more of a concentrated way. You see that as well? The last weapon really spreads the impact out over a very wide area, and it has an extremely soft filling. So now you're getting into more kind of classic 20th century sap territory. It's still made with the same intention as the last one, which is to put you to sleep, basically, without, you know, cracking the skull. But now... Besides, you know, going behind the ear, maybe to the jaw with an uppercut, or to the side, from the side looking for a knockout, now you're talking about you could strike the wrist, the back of the hand, things like that. It doesn't hurt as much as a hard-loaded sap would on those spots, but those kind of targets now come into play. Really, any kind of bony protuberance that's close to the surface, close to the skin, is going to be effective you know, to varying degrees, and that gets you, that's basically introducing classic sap blackjack targets. Now, speaking of old-timers, how about this one? Here's a real old-timer, right? In Victorian England, kind of, I call it the wire-bound kosh, love this one. And you can see the main difference here is it re the head reduces the striking surface greatly compared to the last two, right? It's got almost an edge that you're striking with. You also have braided leather, so braided leather now introduces cuts, and that was never the primary focus of these weapons, but now you could, if you needed to, maybe it's the only target available, strike to say just the, the head, you know, the forehead, just anything like that, and you're going to get an effect that you would not with these here. So there's a jab, which by the way, and there's a swipe, you know, a swing, and there's kind of a butt-end strike. Really the strike, the swipe, in other words, is the only one effective with all three weapons that we just looked at. Same here, the difference with this one, if you call its video, is that the load is so incredibly light with this one that it really just stings. So I classify these as stingers. It's going to cause kind of a whipping pain anywhere you hit. And if you hit to the head hard enough, you will see stars. I, I know that personally. But that's really a different kind of weapon. This isn't going to break bones. It isn't going to produce a knockout through concussive force. So anywhere from the neck down, and this is really just a pain compliance instrument. Whereas the other ones could actually disable, like a limb, or, you know, that kind of thing, with a good enough strike. And now here are blackjacks that are soft loaded. I'm going to show two. They're both old. Uh, but here it's kind of similar to what we said with the D3 protection sap. But notice the striking hit is, and there it is in fact, right? But here notice the, the BBs, whatever they are, they're going to be more tightly packed. So this one and the next one, which is an old Buckhammer 211, you pretty much treat them like a blackjack. So again, any kind of bony surface, uh, you know, the inside of the knee, I don't think I've mentioned that one, the elbow, that was one that was used a lot, the collarbone, those are all going to be effective, the hand right there, ouch, but not as effective as an actual hard-loaded blackjack. And this is supposed to be a targeting video, so I'll mention the temple as well, which I haven't yet, I don't think, and obviously that's a vulnerable spot on the head, as any martial artist, you know, or fighter knows, and at least with this kind of BB sap, uh, one of the names it was called by, you're taking less of a chance of absolutely crushing the skull, which a shot to the temple with this would be, you know, potentially lethal. So we've now, as you can tell, moved into the actual kind of modern classic blackjack. So coil spring body and that really solid, large striking head. So the targeting is really the same, it's just a question of degree of damage, and you've, we've upped it for sure. And here's a jab, which can now be introduced. So you could jab to the neck, which wouldn't be a nice thing to do, uh, straight into the solar plexus to try to knock the breath out. So different techniques and targets that we haven't seen before. Now, speaking of kind of the modern blackjack, the other thing about them is with head strikes, they would tend to open up cuts even if they didn't have the braided leather, like this one, because it's still a very reduced striking surface. So it's really just kind of a secondary nasty side effect. Now, 
there's the butt end, and you could strike down with that. But with like this vintage Buckheimer 8980, you're gonna have a extra gruesome effect one doing that. This is why I was just talking about cutting a second ago, because that metal ring, which is actually just designed to hold the lanyard in place, is gonna just cause some really gross uh, superficial cuts. Here's a modern blackjack. This is a Foster Impact Devices Carney Jack, made by Scott Foster. And we've now dialed it up to, you know, just hit anywhere, and it's going to have a serious effect. This thing's a monster. Not only is it a really big blackjack, uh, just check that out, that comparison, but it's a cable jack. So instead of a coil, it's got a cable, which means it swings faster and harder. This is just a brutal instrument, and uh, this is the kind now you're upping the destructive capabilities, you're really not just looking to subdue somebody, say like a policeman who's carrying a blackjack. You know, once upon a time, uh, this is a, a very serious weapon. I have a friend who's a HEMA, historical European martial arts uh, expert, so he's used to handling much bigger weapons, and he was impressed with the power that that comparatively little item has. So this jack here was, uh, it's from the 60s or 70s, it was confiscated by a South Texas cop, and the main difference here, the only one here between everything else we've seen, is the leather. Not only is it braided, but it's a really like hard, thick leather. So it'd be extra gruesome when it comes to cutting. Uh, it's almost strange to me that blackjacks were ever carried by police because of that effect. Uh, flat saps, you know, rounded saps, that to me makes much more sense. So that's it for blackjacks, which lets us move on to the flat sap. Kind of the final evolution of our weapons family, in a way. And the flat sap is really a blackjack variation. It's like somebody took a blackjack and just flattened out all the parts, not just the striking head. And basically you do strike all the same targets when you're striking with the intended part, which is, you know, there, the flat, the kind of epicenter of the striking head. When you're striking there, it's a little bit of a different impact because it obviously distributes it over a wider area. Very unlikely to cut, or much less likely to cut, I should say. So you can see why it would appeal to, to law enforcement. There's a nice flat strike, but it's basically really all the same targets. If, however, you strike with that edge, that really thin edge, as you guys know, probably from my other videos, now you've got a cutting implement, so like a real cutting slicing implement. So it really changes the game, and it's just a surprise side effect. They were not intended for that, but they could do that very effectively. Maybe more importantly, the thing is that reduces the striking surface to such a limited space that you get a real penetrating impact, which a broad flat surface, of course, does not provide. So now you get people turning them sideways using that edge there. You see that? This is a Buckheimer Texan. And that coming down on, say, like a wrist bone or anything like that, that's a bone breaker. A strike to the side of the neck, basically the equivalent of a karate chop, is absolutely going to be very effective. Really, any kind of empty hand, edge hand, or ridge hand technique, the targets you would go for there would be the same here. And the other thing is, because of that edge and its penetrating impact, large muscle groups are now in play. So here's a Green Man Leather kind of Buckheimer recreation sap, recreating their quote-unquote midget sap. That's what it was called back in the day. And see, I'm jabbing with the top and the bottom. You see the way it fits snugly over my fist? This is really, and it's so short, it's really more useful for jabbing than swinging, but essentially it's going to be all the same targets we talked about. And now to something that's technically a flat sap, I guess, but not really. The Gonzales, the infamous Gonzales. This is by D3 Protection. Uh, Dave there does kind of the, the historically accurate recreation of these. So if you look at an old picture, they look exactly like this. And these were a different animal. Look at that. Now this is one specific model, the 415, but they were all massive. And went about things a different way. Totally different design in a sense. This is a soft sap, by the way. It's actually packed with, you know, metal shot. But it's got such a long, broad striking surface. They're just huge and heavy by sap standards. So it can certainly generate enough concussive force to get the job done. The targets really don't change. It's just that it provides a lot more power. The real difference is that you have so much more margin for error. So even if I take a big blackjack, like the one we are talking about, you know, this one from Scott Foster, that's the one where I said, yeah, it gets in the territory where it almost doesn't matter what you hit. Well, you can see the difference here. You still have to hit with the right part of the weapon, and it's still fairly small, even on that big blackjack. Well, here you have this huge uh, work area, if you will. And that stays true even for, like, a flat sap, which you think of as having a broad area. But the actual lead, I always say, just compare it to, like, the pad of your thumb. It's really only about that big. In the sap world, this is as close as it gets to, say, like a lead pipe, where it really doesn't matter what part you're hitting with. The effect is basically going to be the same. 
And I know that's an oversimplification, but it serves the purpose <laughs> for this discussion. So here's just a, a generic sap to kind of try to represent, it's the bookhammer again, 211, but to just kind of represent the category overall. And I'm just going to tick off a couple of targets we haven't talked about yet, because that was the request for this video. So shins and ankles, how about that? A little bit surprising, right? But you've got bone, it hurts. We've all been kicked in the shin, presumably. And then the ankle, it's kind of like the wrist. Small moving parts, small bones. It's going to be effective, and people did target them when they were available back in the day. One more that you might not expect is the tip of the shoulder. You've got a bony knob there on the end of your shoulder, and I've been assured by people who have actually used them and have seen incidents from the past where that can have an effect too, kind of numb, again, that whole area. And funny enough, I can think of some like kung fu techniques, empty hand techniques that target the exact same spot. That same target is used with the billy club, or was, I should say, back in the Victorian era in England. So that's my overview. Uh, the astute martial artist is going to know I didn't cover every target possible, nor do I know every target, but, you know, extra dangerous and maybe nasty things I kind of left out. Uh, that's what I was comfortable covering in this video, and I uh, hope you like it. Thanks.